And in a few moments, we're going to prophesy to some people. But here's the, here's the here, kind of a general rule. If you listen with your heart, not your head alone, but when you listen with your heart, if it resonates for you, receive it. What's good for one is good for another. Now, if you have an attitude, why are they getting a word? I didn't get a word. <laughs> You're probably not going to get much. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Attitude determines performance. And something you've heard, and you're going to hear it all summer long, so I'm going to give you a warning. Life is 90% attitude, 10% circumstances. So you can make mountains out of molehills, or you can basically take mountains and say, Be thou, remove, cast into sea, and make it nothing. Because God's saying, it's not why is this happening to me, but how are you responding? See, I'm going to get my two cents in here because Jennifer's preaching this morning. <laughs> All right. We're you may be seated, and we will receive the tithes and offerings. Do you want to give the prophetic words first? No. No, okay. I'm going to wait. And you want to make some announcements first? Well, let's wait till after the. Okay. okay. Where was those people that raised their hands? Uh, stand up if you're here for the very first time. Very first time. Okay. And that's Al and April. April. Al and April. There's a, there's a favor that is upon you like a robe. And God is saying, you haven't seen anything yet. It's because of what you've sown over the years. God says, you're entering into a season in the next few months of reaping that which was sown. That which was sown in the spirit, in the anointing, God says, even if you saw no return at the time, God says, I'm bringing it back in a way to where they cast your bread upon the water, it will return. And this is a season of returning. And there's also some relationships that are going to be returning into your life. You're going to begin to cross paths with people you've known in the past. And God says, because you've not burned bridges, God says, you're going to see the benefit of both the old as well as the new. You're in a season of new relationships, but you're also in a season of rekindling the fire and, and the God purpose for some of these previous relationships. In April, God says, I just see you uh, with, with uh, <laughs> you're going to love this, I just see you with a bunch of little children around you, and they're basically looking, looking to you as, as a spiritual Esther. And they're going to be basically looking to you. These are natural children as well as spiritual children. And they're going to be looking to you as one who has great wisdom. And uh, people with wisdom are sought out by others. It has nothing to do with your intelligent level. Wisdom is something that is so far superior to intelligence that people look for it. And people will be drawn to it. And like a magnet, you're going to draw. Just like, just you just I just see children just gathering together around you uh, more and more. They they there's something in your spirit that attracts like a magnet, and it's not just the wisdom of God, but it's the love of God that attracts and the wisdom of God that is being expressed. And uh, just like the, uh, a woman from Florida just shared recently, that the door of the heart is a two-way door. It goes in and it goes out. You can stop it from receiving. And you can quench it from, from giving. But God says, you are a forgiving people. This is a word for everybody right now. You are a forgiving people. That means you vote for giving. All right? You vote for giving. Forgiving is a giving. But to a forgiver, you reap according to the measure Pressed down, shaken together, and running over to the measure you agree. This is a kingdom principle. This is the word of the Lord for this congregation. The kingdom principle of sowing and reaping is the, is the supreme kingdom principle. All other parables and principles are built upon sowing and reaping. And God says if you are forgiving, then you're reaping the favor of God. Because you are going to receive as you give, forgive. As you give, you're going to receive. Press down, shaken together, and running over. The contrary is also true, for this is a time of cleansing in the body of Christ as well. For God says, I want to move by my spirit to holiness. And in that holiness, there is going to be judge not lest you be judged. According to the measure you judge, you will reap. There are people living in despair, and spiritual poverty 
but it's because they're reaping many of the judgments that they've made. The beauty of this is that there is a solution in Jesus. It's called repentance and forgiveness. And you can cleanse yourself so that you can become a vessel of honor. So Father, right now, we release a cleansing right now for the purposes of God to make ready a people prepared for the holiness that's coming. And, and uh, April and <clears throat> Al, you're going to be part of the next move of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lori, I believe it is, isn't it? Right here. Lori, go ahead, Jennifer. You want to start? Lori, I hear the Lord say that there have been some things that have happened in the past, and, and the Lord says it wasn't right, it wasn't fair, it wasn't just. But the Lord says, let those things go because of the joy that's set before you. The Lord says, what I am bringing to you, says the Spirit of God, will far outweigh anything that's happened in the past. And the Lord says that he's going to put a new heart in you. There's going to be a heart of um, the intercessor in you that will have compassion even for those who hurt you and wound you, says the Spirit of God. And the Lord says you're going to be able to see past the deeds done to the heart and the needs of the people. So the Lord says that he is taking you up, even this is a day of graduation, he's taking you up to a higher level even today, says the Lord. Amen. And God's basically saying that you're going to be an example for the many wounded people in the wounded body of Christ, that you're going to show them what, how God heals, restores, and brings new strength. They will be drawn to you much like a magnet as well, because there's a, there's a purity that's coming in, a guilelessness. And that manipulation is something that is totally foreign to you, because you've been, because you've been gullible in some areas and hurt and wounded by it. God says, I'm going to make you the kind of woman that is going to be attractive to all people people. They're going to recognize the purity that's in your heart. And even when they can't sense it, you're going, uh, when they can't sense uh, who you are individually, they will be attracted to your spirit. <coughs> and, <laughs> and faith, you're going to be blessed and favored of God as well. Amen. And um, our children can be dismissed now for Sunday school. <laughs> uh, thank you, Laura. And the couple over here, or two people. First name? I can't hear. Vincent. Vincent? Vincent. Okay. Vincent, I hear the Lord say that uh, God's got some new things that are coming into your life, and the Lord says that there's going to be even a discouragement that you're going to let go, and the Lord says um, that He's going to wash away the past. The Lord says He's absolutely going to wash away the past, and the Lord says He's bringing you, bringing you into a time of cleansing, a time of healing, a time of new things. The Lord says that there is, there is a, He's opening up to a fresh new page in the book of your life, and the Lord says He's going to begin to write a new chapter of your life, and the Lord says He's going to give you understanding that you haven't had in the past. The Lord's going to give you understanding and revelation, and the Lord says part of that is going to be in the new chapter. Chapter. And the Lord says He's going to give you um, a facility with people that you have in the past lacked. And the Lord says He's going to open your heart even to understand others better. And I just hear, I hear you're going to be part of, of a movement of young people as well. They're going to be drawn together and say, you know what, uh, maybe we need to rethink some things. And you're going to be able to have the answers on the tip of your tongue and you're going to be used in encouraging people who want to think outside of the box, people who want to question some of the things in a healthy way that they've been told. And God's basically saying, I'm going to use you as, as a pioneer in some areas. And so uh, you can be the kind of man who is laid back. You don't have to talk a lot. But when, when you open your mouth, people are going to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And... Joni, Joni, I hear the Lord say that um, that things are just beginning for you. That the Lord says that there are some things that you've longed for. There's there's some things that you've wept for. There have been some things that you've cried out in the night. There have been some things that you have 
desperately desired. The Lord says that nobody even knows about, but the Lord says, I'm the one who looks at the heart. I'm the one who knows the deep things within you. And the Lord says, I'm bringing you answers, my dear. I am bringing you answers. I'm going to bring you into those things that you've desired because they're my desires for you, says the Spirit of God. And I also believe too that you're going to be part. You're going to be part of a company of people that is going to experience the holiness of God in this next awakening, and that holiness is not going to translate legalism. That holiness is going to translate purity, power, love, affection, and attention. It's going to be a radical God kind of acceptance to where it it instills in you a desire to honor. It's a, it's going to be a want to, not a have to. And the next move of God is going to be a move of holiness, but it's not going to be when people hear that word, they hear it one particular way. They hear legalism. Holiness is no, no, be holy for I am holy. And it's going to have to do, it's going to have to do with receiving him as your inheritance. And just as uh, you recall the scripture that I'm, when I'm looking at you, I'm seeing this, but this is probably for other people as well, but it's specifically for you. Give me my mountain. When that cry was given in the old covenant, it was give my allotted territory. But I've got news for you in this day and this age under the new covenant, that allotment is Jesus himself. He is your portion. He is your allotment. And there's an anointing on this. Receive it. And anyone that can feel that, you need to take that in because God's saying, I'm bringing you into your promised land and it's not stuff. I'm bringing you into a greater appreciation of me. Lori, that's for you specifically. I'm bringing you into your inheritance. You may lay aside what you think that inheritance is because I, the Lord, am going to be your exceedingly great reward in and of itself. We're looking for more of Him. And in the days ahead, God says, I'm bringing a company full of people that are going to walk in the holiness of God and they're going to know that they have spoken and said, give me my mountain is really much, much more of Him than perceived. So, Keep the heart open for, for God is about to visit himself in his people. In Jesus' name, amen. Visit himself in his behalf. You know what I meant. All right. Amen.